This is the Texas Panhandle, and it's currently on fire. The Smokehouse Creek wildfire is the largest in Texas history, burning over a million acres, which is about the size of Rhode Island. And a lawsuit claims that the fire started when a wood power pole owned by Excel Energy snapped and toppled over due to negligent maintenance. Now, there are a lot of Texans like myself who are upset that our state is on fire. But does this lawsuit have any legitimacy to it? Who filed the lawsuit? Is a utility company really responsible for a wildfire? And most importantly, do the other thousands of Texans affected by this have a case? In today's video, I speak to the lawyer who filed the first lawsuit to find out. In Texas this morning, firefighters are battling the largest wildfire in state history. The series of exploding wildfires tearing across northern Texas, leaving a path of destruction. A major loss of livestock, crops, True. infrastructure. About 86% of the state's cattle industry is actually in the panhandle. So this is just completely devastating. With high winds behind it, I mean, these fires are just moving quicker than anybody can kind of get around at this point. The largest fire in Texas right now is less than 5% contained. It is growing so fast, it's on its way to approaching the largest fire in Texas state history. Let's start with the lawsuit itself. If you're like me, you've probably been following the growing trend of utility negligent cases for a while. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Okay, you're probably not like me, whose job it is to keep up with this stuff. But let me just say, unfortunately, utility negligent cases aren't new. Over the past decade, utility-related fires have incinerated millions of acres of land, destroying thousands of homes and businesses, and sadly killing hundreds of innocent people. Since 2017, we have seen lawsuits in California, Oregon, New Mexico, Hawaii, and now Texas that allege a major fire started due to negligently maintained utilities. In Texas alone, power lines have caused over 4,000 fires in the past three and a half years. There are three main types of utility negligent cases. First, vegetation management cases. Basically, this occurs when a utility company fails to keep trees off of power lines. Next, we have mechanical failure cases, when a mechanical widget with high voltage fails that leads to sparking, which can then start a fire. And last, we have rotting and failing utility poles. This appears to be the case in the Panhandle fires. Uh, if those poles rot out and fail, uh, then the line falls, uh, hits the ground and ignites a fire. That's what happened here. Uh, and so this is this is classic negligence of a utility company. It's classic failure mode causing a wildfire. And if 102 people dying in Maui wasn't enough to get everybody's attention, uh, burning down 1.1 million acres of, of the Texas panhandle uh, certainly should. I sat down with Michael Watts, the attorney who filed the first lawsuit against XL Energy, Southwestern Public Services Company, which is XL's wholly owned Texas subsidiary, and Osmos Utility Services, the company contracted by XL to maintain the power poles. He says rotting and failing utility pole cases are becoming increasingly more common. Why? Because wooden utility poles have been a main component of our power infrastructure for over a century, and unlike diamonds, Wood doesn't last forever. Natural decay over time and other uncontrollable events like storms or earthquakes means that these poles need to be inspected and maintained on a consistent basis and replaced when necessary. And it's the duty of these utility companies to take action. They have a non-delegable duty under the Texas Public Utilities Commission's rules and legislatively uh, to keep their power grid uh, up to snuff. In Texas, it's a common law and non-delegable duty for a utility company to construct, install, operate, maintain, and control the poles, power lines, and the associated equipment and components in a proper manner. And it's a regulatory duty to conform to the National Electric Safety Code and other standards that are generally accepted by the electric utility industry. Also, utility companies have a common law and regulatory duty to inspect, control, repair, and maintain power lines, power poles, and the associated equipment and components in a safe and reasonable fashion, such that an event like foreseeable winds would not cause the power poles to break and cause a fire to break out. In the case at hand, the Smokehouse Creek fire began on February 26, 2024, approximately one mile north of Stinnett, Texas in Hutchinson County. And according to Michael's investigation, drone footage revealed that a downed power line seemed to be the cause of the fire. We took a drone and went in there and the fire pattern begins right at the intersection of power lines. When you take that drone and you uh, go in even further, you see that there's a downed pole. 
And uh, this is a very typical failure mode for the start of fires. And that is, is that we put wooden poles up and let them stand up for 70 or 80 years. And they're faced with all sorts of corrosive environments. Um, this is what started the fire in Maui that burned down uh, the town of Lahaina and killed 102 people. Same thing. And since the filming of this interview, XL has actually come out and acknowledged their role in the fire, saying, based on currently available information, XL Energy acknowledges that its facilities appear to have been involved in the ignition of the Smokehouse Creek fire. But this begs the greater question, why does it seem that utility poles are beginning to fail all across the country? According to the North American Wood Pole Council, there's no consensus on the service life of a wooden pole. An Oregon State University study from 2000 states that the majority of utility companies believe their poles have a lifespan of 31 to 40 years. But what do they mean by lifespan? In an updated report conducted by OSU in 2013, the utility companies retracted their original estimates, stating that the service life of poles are far in excess of 30 to 40 years. And when trying to reconcile the utility company's drastic change in their estimates, the council concluded, quote unquote, there is compelling evidence indicating that the estimated 30-year pole service life originated from the curves developed to estimate economic service rather than the actual service life, meaning that the 30-year mark denotes when the investment in the pole has been returned, not when the pole fails. So it appears we have an aging power pole infrastructure all across the country, but utilities are incentivized not to replace these poles because they are looking at this from an investment side of things. The Smokehouse Creek fire merely highlights a public safety epidemic in the United States that is almost 100% preventable. The lack of maintenance, ability, or care to uphold our infrastructure poses a massive danger to American lives, land, and well-being. The power grid in wildfire-prone states is often neglected until the problem is too severe to manage. If we can stop the scourge of these wildfires by applying litigation pressure and getting these companies to make very simple technological changes and then I think we're going to be in good shape and we'll get these uh, fires under control because most of them are being started by utility equipment, which is a shame. The first case Michael filed is on behalf of Melanie Lee McQuitty, whose property was consumed by the flames. At the beginning of this video, I told you I would give you my predictions on what I believe is going to happen. I anticipate thousands of lawsuits will be filed against Excel with a wide range of damages from non-commercial property owners like Ms. McQuitty, whose home burned down, to massive ranches who suffered tens of millions of dollars in economic loss due to their livestock being destroyed. And it's not just for this season, because the ground is torched, it's likely that ranching capabilities will be hindered for years to come. Additionally, there will likely be wrongful death and injury lawsuits for those trapped in the flames and everything in between. It seems clear that XL Energy is at fault for this incident, but just because XL is likely responsible does not mean they're just going to roll over and fairly compensate the victims. They're very expensive, expert-driven cases. This isn't just something where you show up and say, write me a check, you have to show what you lost. You're going to need somebody that deals with uh, pole maintenance. You're going to need somebody who's a metallurgist, a termite expert, fire cause and origin person, a fire spread person. You know, these are usually six or seven experts, and that's on the liability side. And then on the damages side, you're going to need somebody that talks about the cost to rebuild or what was the value lost on the structure that burned down. What's the value of all the equipment that was inside of the structure? If it's a home, all of the art, all the furniture, get an insurance pricer, take it to the equivalent of eBay to price it all. In ranch land cases, lost value of the ranch when it's all burned up, all of that grass that used to be feed for livestock and heifer cattle. So all those cattle are going to have to be sold at a loss or you're going to have to buy a ton of feed at an extraordinary loss. But fire did the trick uh, for most of these uh, cattle. I mean, they just burned thousands and thousands. Get an expert uh, in terms of feedlot prices. Uh, what was that cow going to be worth if you had taken it to the feedlot the day before the fire? You've also got the cost of removing all those carcasses and properly disposing of them. A lot of fire cases, you have mental anguish for people that are inside the zone of danger. Depending upon the facts of the case, there's punitive damages involved from time to time. It's just a long litany of damages that are caused by this kind of thing. If anybody watching this is personally affected by the fire, my recommendation is to go talk to a lawyer. I think it's important that these companies learn their lesson so this never happens again. And it appears the only way to teach them is to affect their bottom line. I can tell you the good news is we're putting ourselves out of business out in California. The, the worst actor <laughs> there has been uh, is PG&E. It's a three-time felon. They had to pay out 
you know, in, in excess of $26 billion by the time we got done with them. They went through bankruptcy. And, and if these companies don't do the right thing, that's where they're going to end up. But this is something that can be cleaned up and ought to be cleaned up. You know, we're going to have to keep applying pressure on these folks until they do the right thing and, and clean up their, their act. I'd like to thank Michael Watts for his participation in this interview. Make sure you hit the subscribe button with notifications on so you don't miss any future investigations. And as always, if you need a lawyer, regardless of whether it's a wildfire case or any other type of matter, feel free to reach out to attorneytom.com. If it's not the right case for me or my team, we may be able to help you find a lawyer through our national network of attorneys. We will at least try. All right, talk to y'all later. Bye.